You know what? I'll take Olive Baker. <laughs> it looks like we're live now. So are hello. we? Hello. Hello. Hi. Am, is it? Hang on. It says we're live. Uh, we should yep. be live right now. Yes. All right. right Hi, everyone. I'm T. Fugner. I'm the editorial director for comics at King Future Syndicate and Comics Kingdom. And I'm here today with Olive Brinker, the creator of our newest comic, Ray the Doe. Hi, Olive. Hello. Hello. I'm Olive. Hi. <laughs> it's so great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. We got the plushes. Oh, Hell nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. Well, we can we can talk about the plushes in a little bit, but this yeah. is Ray and uh, Mimi in plush form. And we're Pink Mimi. Pink Mimi. We're going to be talking about them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so let's talk, let's just start talking about Ray the Doe. So tell us a little bit about, um, about your comic. Yeah. So Ray the Doe started two years ago. Um, it started as a Twitter comic. Um, just kind of, I impulsively one day I was just sitting, I was just standing at work and I thought of a joke which I won't repeat because it is now too explicit to be a syndicated comic. Um, <laughs> weirdly, weirdly, the first Ray of the Doe is kind of risque joke. Um, but I thought of a pun that was funny and I was like, hmm, I'm going to make this a comic. And I've made like a couple comics the year before. Like I've been making comics kind of my whole life, but I kind of fell out of it for a couple years. Uh, just because I was so busy with school and other stuff. Um, but I, I got into a small habit of making comics where I represented myself as like a little blob person. But I was like, making myself a blob person is kind of like boring, you know? I don't want to just be like a circle. I only did that because it would save me time <laughs> actually drawing myself. So I'm like, what is another way to save myself time of drawing the same character over and over again. And I was like, well, I really like deer. So I'd like the, for the character to be a deer. And I'm just gonna simplify her design to be the most simple version of a deer possible. So that's why Ray like doesn't have fingers. That's why she has one eye and no mouth. That's why she just has one ear and her antlers are just the letter F twice. You know, it's why why she only is like one two three four five colors i just wanted it to be like the most simple design possible to draw it over and over again because it was just a comic idea that i was like i'll just do this three times a week whenever i have a funny idea for a joke or an observation i want to make and it just kind of started from there and it wasn't supposed to be a thing like it was never going to be a career or um when i started the comic ray didn't have a name the comic itself didn't have a name um it was just a thing i was doing as like a a side hobby oh wow so yeah. when did she get a name uh after four comics it took a week of comics and then eventually i was like okay and i think at first i was calling it ray the deer and then eventually i was like okay no it's ray the doe her name was originally supposed to be Sybil the Deer because I thought that Sybil.tumblr.com wasn't taken, but apparently it was like, <laughs> there was like a miscommunication with Tumblr where they said it wasn't taken, but then it was. And I was like, okay. So Ray the Doe was like the backup name, even though it's act. So when people say Ray the Doe is like a pun on Do Re Mi, it's not. It's 100% unintentional. It's just because it's... Uh, based on Carly Ray Jepsen. Oh. And I didn't want it to be Carly the Doe because I don't know why. I Some part of my brain was like, this can't be, I can't take her first name. I have to take her middle name. I don't know why. That That's how my brain worked in that but moment. But also your subconscious was, yeah. your subconscious was punning even when you weren't. Yeah. And people were <laughs> like, well, what about Lottie and Mimi? Those are puns. And I'm like, well, yeah, those, uh, I didn't name those people. And that is the thing that people forget, which is that 
Lottie, Mimi, and Sybil were created all at the same time as a contest to see like which of these three characters will be Ray's girlfriend. And then Mimi won the contest because she just won a Twitter poll on oh, Valentine's wow. Day. And the Twitter poll was like 21 people voted. And now there's a plush of her. <laughs> $30,000 was was fun was was raised to make a plush of her. So it's it's so weird how like there's an alternate universe where I'm holding a plush of Lottie or Sybil right now. So tell us a little bit about these characters because you know we we probably have some fans but we might have some folks who aren't familiar with Ray or Mimi or Lottie or Sybil yet. Um mm -hmm. so t tell us a little bit about who Ray is. Tell us a little bit about who Mimi is. So Ray is like it's funny she was intentionally um I really didn't want her to have any personality at all. I wanted her to just be a reflection of me and this is me calling myself out extremely here where i said she's just supposed to be self-insert there there's no continuous personality between strips um just the way she acts isn't supposed to be like each univ each strip is its own universe this was my mindset like the first month of the comic but then people kept going like oh this character is so anxious oh, this character is so <laughs> so this and that. And I'm like, I guess I'm just anxious. <laughs> so eventually I was like, okay, I guess Ray is anxious. I, I just started taking parts of my personality because that's what I was doing in the beginning. And just, I, w I was starting to like amplify them for the character of like, okay, Ray is anxious. She's passionate. She's She loves her girlfriend. She like even though she's like really scared at times and is a bit of a crybaby at times, she also just gets really excited about her interests and stuff. Um, just a very passionate person. And then Mimi is kind of like very monotone and very like the cool one of the group and doesn't respect uh, authority or things that she thinks is an in in injustice, you know? Um, and then Lottie uh, just loves trash and that's just her entire personality. <laughs> and that's just always how it's been. And there's just never been any development beyond that. And I'm just fine with it. Uh, Sybil started as like, she was supposed to be the smart one, but then she ended up um, dating Lottie. At some point they started dating. And uh, then she just over time did not become the smart one. She just became like the oblivious one because I always imagine Sybil and Lottie as like the group of people who when they're on their own, they're very like, they're like, they can get anything done when they're on their own. But then when they're together, they're just so goofy and having such a good time that they're like, they can't get anything done. You know what I mean? You know, people like that. Which is definitely like, they're, that's definitely like an aspect of relationship goals, right? Yeah. No, yeah. A hundred percent. No. I have friends that are like that. We're like, when we're on our own, we're like salt. We're like solving giant math equations. Then we get together and we're just like, um, what? Um, and then Pascal is her roommate. He is a bat. He is also trans. He is probably my favorite character. I love him. He's very uh, underrated. He is uh, underrated. He's great. Yeah, he is great. I wish I could make a plush of him, but that is probably not possible. Um, Sawyer the squirrel is kind of filled the gap of like the smart one of the group. Love Sawyer. Um, they are a teacher's assistant at a college. I think that's canon. I, I mean, I just, it is now, you know. <laughs> I made random things canon. I can't remember if they're true or not. That's fine. You know, we'll, we'll just hold you to it if it isn't yeah. that. So, yeah. So, um, so I'd love to know like a little bit about your background, how you got into comics, how you got into drawing, you know, what you love about it. Yeah, so I've just always been drawing comics ever since I was like a little kid. I've just always been drawing. And I don't know what got me into comics. I don't know if it was Captain Underpants, but that was definitely oh. a giant influence for me as a kid. Um, and I just loved reading the Sunday newspaper and um i remember it was in the better living section which like was all it was all like boring stuff of just like hmm here's some 
I don't even remember what it was. It was just like furniture or something. I don't remember what it was. It was all like really boring stuff. But then at the <laughs> at the back of the section, it was like, here's the comics. And I was like, don't mind if I do. And um, I, I, I distinctly remember reading those every single day as a kid. Um, but yeah, I, I, I had in middle school, I had a little like group of friends and we all made comics together and i kind of had my own little i had the ray the dough of 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 its time back then in middle school which was funny oh yeah what was that one that was called homer home fry oh yeah it was just about a little anthropomorphic home fry and just everyone in his family is a different type of potato product so like his like brother is i think a hash brown And his dad is, I think his dad is just a normal potato. No, his uncle is a normal potato. His dad is a, his, his brother's a tater tot. This is not important. (laughs) No, but it's great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it it was, it was, it was crucial. Um, And just from there, um, I did a couple web comics. They never really picked up. Mostly because I didn't update them very much. Um, yeah um yeah that's very cool yeah yeah that's kind of like the curse of the web cartoonist though like if mm-hmm. you you know if you stop updating then you feel bad about it and you don't do it and then it just keeps going well but... what's funny is i've seen people be like oh like i can't believe olive just made one comic and instantly became successful and it's like well no i've this is like my fifth comic this is like my fifth web comic attempt like oh, wow yeah like I've been like, I was, I've been a digital artist on Twitter since I was a freshman in high school, like actively trying to become popular and I'm 24 now. So it's like, it took me this long to become popular. Like it's, it's not like I like, like just like popped out of the, some bushes and was like, look at my comics. And everyone was like, mm, I love it. Thank you. It was more like, I was like, I popped out of some bushes and I was like, look at my comics. And everyone is just like slowly turning around. And then eventually after like eight years, they were like, I recognize these comics. And I was like, thank you. Um, I don't know if that's a metaphor. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, no, I think that that's, I, I think that's always valuable for people to hear that, you know, that sometimes things don't come on the first try and you know, they take some practice. So that's mm-hmm. always, you know, I think it's always, you yeah. know, it's, I think it's very reassuring for, for younger cartoonists, especially who are like, well, why, why are people not reading my thing? And it's, well, you know, sometimes it takes a few tries. And so. sometimes it's just luck, you know, yeah. it's just, you come in at the right place at the right time. You just make a comic about something and it just strikes a chord with people. Like I, I made a comic about offensive comedians and how I don't think they're very funny. And that got me a thousand, I think it got me like 3000 followers overnight, like literally within the same day. And before that I had like, I think like 300 followers or something. So it was like a huge difference for me overnight. And it's just like, yeah, sometimes you'll just make it like, it just, it, it really is just like out of nowhere, you'll just make a comic about something and people will just be like, oh, I didn't realize this existed. Hello, I see it now because a bunch of people retweeted it. Like, you never know when that could happen to you at any moment. So don't lose hope or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, and it's it's funny when that happens too, because I feel like, you know, were you were you like, ah, yes, this comic is one that people are going to really relate to? Or was it just like you stuck it up and then suddenly there were all these people? Um, I distinctly remember the day, it was the day they announced that Mighty, the Armadillo, and Ray, the Flying Squirrel were coming to Sonic Mania. Um, (laughs) it was something I've been waiting for for years. Um, the return of those two characters to the Sonic the Hedgehog canon. And I was just really excited about that. I was even thinking about the comic I was drawing. I was just kind of like, oh, another Ray the Doe comic, whatever. Just gonna fart this one out. And then... I posted it and I was like, I hope no one gets mad at me because this one's kind of spicy. 
that's kind of what I thought. And then I went to the LGBT uh, club at my college and I was just like, oh, this is getting kind of, <laughs> I was like, people are, are getting mad at me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, people are getting mad at me, but a lot of people are retweeting it. So whatever. Good. That means more people liked it than got mad. So yeah, that's exactly. What matters. That's I mean, super. Yeah. yeah. I don't think of that comic. I think that comic was the like, like the the domino toppling that led to me becoming popular i think without yeah. that people wouldn't have like seen the rest of the comics i guess i don't yeah. know well i'm i'm super grateful for them because you know at some point for it because at some point i found i i found ray the doe and i love i i love ray so much so mm -hmm. you know so so i'm i'm happy that happened I, I am happy that I am now popular because I don't feel, I feel the need to not be spicy. I'm just like, I, I, I don't need to make a comic that will make people mad at me. People, and what I found out is that people will be mad at me anyway. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. Um, sorry. No, there's, I think the phone is <laughs> no, ringing in the no. background. No, I thought, I thought that my Twitter just got hacked. Oh, no. I, got, I got the like so it signed in from a new device thing but it was my union's twitter who several people use so that is okay. totally fine i okay. just got very scared don't hack that. ray the dough <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't do it so so uh you also though you've got you've got your comic which is running five days a week on comics kingdom um but you mm -hmm. also you've done two animated specials and you're working on a video game too right Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not actively working on it right now just because yeah. stuff is uh I'm, I'm moving in like a month and I'm looking for a job so life is kind of hectic but I am kind of like scripting it out and I mean you know I'll say I'm in pre-production uh mm -hmm. yeah but um I made two animated Christmas specials they were really fun to work on the first one is very rough to look back on because I made it in two weeks um while working full time in grocery oh, wow. uh, during the christmas rush so the yeah. fact that it got made is amazing and then the second one i made in i think three weeks full time so it looks a little bit better uh yeah. but yeah um they were both really fun to make i love christmas specials just like as a thing so i was really happy to make them um, it's amazing that they come out as um, down to earth as they do because my ideas for them are always um, if you I don't if you saw like my like original ideas for what the Christmas specials are you would be like what are you talking about this is like this sounds like the plot of a God of War game like <laughs> Like I get so in my that head. That doesn't I'm just, sound like a Christmas special. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, all right, Santa Claus comes back as a ghost and he wants vengeance and they all get trapped in his basement. And then I'm just like, what am I taught now? They're, no. Tone it down, Olive. <laughs> yeah, I'm just... Reel it back in. <laughs> yeah. So, so people, you know, where can people find those? Those are on your YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are on YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and tell us a little bit. So I know you said you're in pre-production on this game, but tell us a little bit about the game. Is the game have a premise? Is it? It has a premise. I want to keep it secret. Okay. Okay. For now. Okay. I will say it is about a evil scientist that is trying to destroy public transit in Ray's town. And it's up to Ray to save public transit and um you go to various locations through new jersey i'm trying to like there's there's like a core conceit of this game that is very spicy that i'm trying to hide and trying to like go around um but yes the game i have the entire story planned out i have all the cool. levels planned out um there's a lot of um sonic references and parodies in it there's like i think five which is too yeah. many but it's me but you're you're a big sonic fan yes. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah that's that's so awesome so 
Sonic <laughs> everywhere. He's a good no. boy. Yeah, a fast good boy. Um, so so you were talking about you were talking about reading the comic pages in the newspaper when you were a kid. And what were some of the comics that you really loved as a kid? I really loved. Um, I love Zits. Mm -hmm. I love Peanuts. I loved. Um, I remember really loving Non Sequitur, even though I didn't understand what it was about. I just liked it because it was all political. Yeah. I just liked how it was drawn. I, but I would just read it every day and be like, I don't know what's going on here. Um, yeah. It wasn't in my new. The two comics that weren't in my newspaper, but probably where my biggest influence was Pearls Before Swine and Calvin and Hobbes. Um, oh yeah, both both great comics. Yeah, love them. Um, yeah. But I would really just, ooh, love Ziggy. Love Ziggy. Ziggy. Yeah. Such a Ziggy fan. Good. Um, when are we going to get a live action Ziggy movie? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We don't, we, we, unfortunately, Ziggy's not, Ziggy's not our comic, so we can't, we can't I, make that happen, but. <laughs> I, I'm not joking, the, like, recently, a couple weeks ago, I was like, hold on, and my coworkers was Ziggy. <laughs> I was, like, ready to be so. Your colleagues. I love, your I love colleagues. all my coworkers. I love all my coworkers, but I was That's just, awesome. like, I just have such a soft spot for Ziggy, um, but, um. What is, um, oh, what is that one that I was just thinking of? Oh, what is it? Not Ziggy. Colleagues. Something you said reminded me of one. What is it? What is it? I don't know. I really, I really just like reading the whole page though. Oh, yeah. Heathcliff. Got Love it. Love current Heathcliff. Another New Jersey cartoonist shouts out, it is so surreal. Love Heathcliff. That's yes. Awesome. I wish Good. I was shouting out more King's features. Oh, that's uh, okay. That's okay. We love I like all the I, I really like the current uh Popeye comic. Oh, the, thank you. Cool. The Popeye Cartoon Ray, Club. Yeah, that, that is great. Popeye Cartoon Club. Everybody check yeah. it out on Comics Kingdom if you haven't yet. Yeah. So yeah. funny. So it's Randy. Randy was one of the folks who did Popeye's Cartoon Club, as you were. You did a mm -hmm. Popeye's Cartoon Club strip. Um, and uh, and we talked with him about doing a little extended version. So that's running for about a month. And uh, you can check those out. And yeah, but thanks. Thanks for letting like, us know. Yeah, it's like upsettingly. It's like one of those things where you're just like, I'm upset that this is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how oh, dare this be so good? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, great I really, to hear. really, really enjoy it. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. So, uh, so I, we're we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna wrap up real quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we're, I'm gonna just check whether there were any questions I missed, but I don't think I just got some very well wishes from some folks. We got a the, we got we have someone saying an overnight su success, a decade in the making. We've got an editor at Comics Kingdom here. We are so excited to have Olive and Ray a part of the Comics Kingdom family. So yeah, hi Jennifer. But... <laughs> I just I, I sent you some comics before today. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so it sounds like everybody's really excited to have you. And mm -hmm. um and we're so thrilled. We're so yeah. thrilled that uh that you're with us at Comics Kingdom. I'm so thrilled. This is it's so great to be syndicated. Awesome. Awesome. So um is there anything else you want to tell everybody before we sign off? Um, oh, show everybody the plushes again. Yes, I'll show everyone the plushes again. I will say the second book is coming soon. Don't know when. Probably in August or September or maybe July. I don't know, <laughs> but soon. Ray the Doe, Act Two. Um, this cover is also a Sonic reference. Nice. Sega, do not sue me. <laughs> <laughs> we um we also have a uh, we have another commenter saying we stand. Yeah, so. of course. <laughs> So um, yeah, so thank you so much for uh, being with us. Uh, you can find Ray the Doe on ComicsKingdom.com and uh, RayTheDoe.com. And you can also check out Olive's Patreon. 
Um, and, uh, and where can people find you on the internet, Olive? Uh, Twitter.com slash Olive Brinker. And that's really it. I'm, I have like an Instagram, but I don't, re I don't use it. I pretty much only use Twitter. So. Awesome. <laughs> cool. And you can find Comics Kingdom at comicskingdom.com and at Comics Kingdom on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Olive, for coming on. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. And we're excited to see uh, what Ray the Doe does next. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody.